Sun Bran Dumlang, hello, it's Simply Spitzer here and welcome back to another episode of the podcast, Simply Do The Work. If it is your first time joining me, I do want to say please do subscribe or follow the podcast and also share it on your various social media platforms. So... I guess for just said just like I just want to like jump straight right into it. So in the last episode, I think you guys remember that I did, you know, I briefly touched on um, the issue of breaking down gender identity, and I'm using that in inverted commas. And I thought for today's podcast, let me discuss that. Let me unpack that a little because it's something that I've wanting. Oh, I'm mumbling. It's something that I've been wanting to talk about for a while now, and I've kind of been procrastinating it because. It is a rather sensitive topic for me, and I also recognize how even for other people listening, it can be. It's also quite polarizing. I do feel that, like, the general sense I get is that when it comes to sexuality, I feel like people are a lot more open to that idea, right, of various sexualities. But as soon as it gets to the topic of gender, that's when people start being, you know, that's when, like, you know, the bigotry starts jumping out of people that you never even expected it from. And so I just do want to preface this and say that um, I might not necessarily say the right things, but I'll be honest, you know, I'll be speaking from my own perspective, my own understanding. And so, I mean, do be patient with me in, if, in case I do say a few things wrong, but I do think that now I'm at a point where I can, you know, speak in a, you know, speak to more people about it, you know. Because I do recognize that my experiences or my understanding of gender might not align with someone else. I think that's like the first thing I could say, right, is that I might not necessarily understand everyone's perspective and point of view, but I can respect it. And that's what I wish we we could get from. That's basically what I wish we could get from cis people, right? If you know, because I feel like a lot of them say, oh, but we don't understand, excuse me, we don't understand the, the trans community, we don't understand non-binary, gender, queer, all of these terms. Excuse me, sorry. But it's like, okay, even if you don't understand it, can you at least respect it? Can you at least be respectful of me? Because there are certain things which I don't understand, right? And other people explain how their gender how gender has affected them, right? The dysphoria that they felt. Like, I, I don't necessarily always relate to them, but I can appreciate and respect. If someone introduces themselves and say, hey, these are my pronouns, I will respect that, right? Like, literally, it's kind of like sometimes I, you have to ask, like, it, I don't lose anything from being respectful, right? And because by disrespecting someone, someone's, you know, pronouns, gender, whatever, I'm actually hurting them and I don't want to enact violence on someone else or harm someone else or cause pain to someone else. Like, I'm very aware of how society and the systems in place have harmed me and I also take time to do the introspection that, to ensure that I do not cause harm to others. And I think that's sort of, sort of what is missing in the discourse. And I think also another thing that gets people... Okay, like maybe can be a stumbling block, right, for cis gendered folk is the language that is used where it comes to gender. Like a lot of time people say I identify as, which, you know, on one end I do recognize the the power and importance of identity. Like identity is political, right? To actually stand up and say, hey, I am this or I'm not that. That is a powerful political statement. But I think some people misinterpret that as being, oh, it's just that that's not who they are. It's they just that's what they're choosing. Me you know, it's like, no, it's not that I necessarily not that I identify as non binary. I am non-binary you know but claiming the identity that is the choice right? i am choosing to step into who i am i am choosing to reject the heteronormative um the heteronormative standards that have been pushed onto me or shoved onto me since from an early age because and the thing is even within the lgbtq plus community we still find um there are a ton of people who are trying to replicate heteronormativity which 
kind of um goes against you know the, the the like if you claim to be queer right but then you are going out of your way to appease or to conform to heteronormative standards a kind of it's a contradiction because queer basically it means like different you know eccentric i think and I think that's also the thing right is that Actually, let me read this quote that I posted. I posted on my Instagram story this morning. The vast majority of humans are cisgender and straight. And all these other complicated terms and categories make some of them wistful for simpler times. But the truth is that there were never simpler times. Just times in which the complexity of human sexuality was a secret hidden from view. And this also obviously includes gender identity because I think I've mentioned this before. You can't be what you've never seen, right? And so I think at least for me what it's been like, right? I've been growing up and I was taught that, okay, there are only two genders, male and female, even though... I would often find myself identifying a lot with the female, but I was like, no, because of my biology, I'm male. Because of my biology, I have to act a certain way. I shouldn't cry. I shouldn't be emotional. I shouldn't be vulnerable. I shouldn't be into artsy things. I shouldn't want to, you know, grow my hair, play with hair, play with dolls, all of these things, which the older you get, the more like just how arbitrary it is, you know. And it's kind of, it's also thing about it's it's very much... For me, at least, it's kind of like, so really, it's not about who I am as a person, but like, it's like all these, you have all these traits placed onto you simply based on your body. Now, don't get me wrong. We do experience this life through our bodies, right? Obviously, you need to take care of your body, have a healthy body. But I do think just the way in which a lot of us are raised, right? is very gendered right and i know some people then wonder okay but then what does this mean like how do you raise kids you know like um because now we're saying we shouldn't gender things and obviously i'm 20 years old don't have kids um not looking to have kids anytime soon but you know i'll just speak from the perspective of you know how i like at least what i can say from the way i was raised my parents weren't like too strict in terms of like gender norms and stuff like my i've even talked about this before how my parents noticed that i have you know a love for hair and so they got me a doll so i could practice playing with hair i remember my mom would even come to me and ask me to style her hair like my sister right now currently has braids i did her hair and i probably wouldn't have you know been able to grow into my love and i guess could say talent for hair because like a lot of people, like even when I had, when I did my own hair, people couldn't believe that I did my own hair. So clearly, you know, I've got somewhat of a talent for it because no one taught me, but I wouldn't have been able to explore that if my parents didn't allow me. And I think the bottom line is just letting kids be kids, right? Listening to kids. I think a lot of times adults have this idea that we know what's best, right? It's like, I'm older, I'm wise, I have more experience. You don't know what you wanted. But I think kids are a lot more intuitive than we give them credit for and so that's just a little tangent right and i'm sure you've noticed that at like at this point i'm like 10 minutes in and i haven't even discussed i didn't touch on is it morally okay because you know maybe listen to this and you're christian you're wondering um but what does the bible say and if you listen to my last episode you know that that is something which i'm like I'm not, I've decided I'm not going to tackle that. At least I can't be tackling that every single time, you know, because I do think it is, it is anti-progress if every time when we want to speak about issues surrounding gender identity and even sexuality, how we have to spend time explaining, is it okay? You know, what, like all of this, right? Because the reality is, whether or not you think it's okay, whether or not you understand it, we're real people. I feel like sometimes people can over not over conceptualize, and I've also spoken about this before, over conceptualize these issues, not recognizing that we're real people that exist, okay? Whether, like I've even said this, like whether or not you understand how non-binary gender works non-binary people exist whether you understand being trans or not transgender people exist and it goes back to what i was saying earlier about how even if you understand just respect it and just to you know quickly touch on the biblical thing you know 
I'm currently doing a course on trans theology, which some of you may or may not know. And maybe in some day I'll do a podcast, you know, just discussing that. I'm currently on week two of it. But one of the things that the facilitators say, which is quite interesting, is that from a biblical perspective, it's actually a lot easier to make a case for gender nonconformity. Because even within scripture, we actually do see people who break the gender norms of their time. We do see people who were shunned because of their gender and how it was expressed in scripture. And it's, I think there's only two verses specifically in the Bible, you know, out of the seven that are used against LGBT as a whole, but only two verses in the Bible that speak directly against um no, like you know gender or whatever and so i found that quite interesting because if you look at society and the discourse we have now it seems like people are a lot more accepting of different sexual orientations when it comes to gender then it just gets a little weird and i think another thing right that gets people tripped up or whatever when i say hey i don't fit into the bin- gender binary i think they feel like i'm imposing on their gender like i'm saying now they can't just be a man they can't just be a woman and it's like why is this about you like how and i think that's the difference between for me the way i see the main difference between gender identity and sexuality right sexuality is about your relations with other people the people you are attracted to the people you fall in love with and all of that right but with gender it's more about who you are as an individual and how you express that and so it's kind of like my gender should not affect yours like if you are feeling some type of way because someone else's gender if that's making you feel uncomfortable in any way you need to sit down to the work and unpack that for yourself and not expect the queer person to sit down with you and to analyze but why is this like like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you need to do that for yourself and not... I feel like another thing that happens is a lot of cis people who, you know, want to be supportive will sort of... It's kind of like they can't just do the work for themselves. They need someone else to do the work for them or to do the work through them. I don't know if I'm making... <laughs> if this is making sense. But, okay, let's take it in a dandy context. Also, another thing which I found rather interesting and i've really i've recently just been watching a lot of videos on it is how does dating look in a non-binary world right in a world where gender is non-binary and i've even i've even had to introspect for myself my attractions like would i date a trans man or a trans woman like all of those things i've had to actually introspect you know and on one end i do feel that i am open right to dating people like, let me be specific, I'm open to dating a trans man, that I am open to it, but at the same time, I'm not sure how I would handle it, and I would hate to, let's say, meet a trans man and be like, okay, cool, let's date, whatever, and then find out once I'm in that, oh, actually, I can't do this, and then hurt him, you know, I, and that's why I do think that we should, like, it's different if, for example, right, let's say he's here, and then we discuss, and like, okay, look, I've never done this before, I'm not sure this is going to work, and he fully is aware and okay. it's just I don't know, it's just trick. Like I just I don't want to hurt someone in that way, you know. But at the same time, I'm not closed off to it because I think in the past I used to be. Yeah, I actually I used to be. I used to be. I'll be honest, a little, a little transphobic. But the funny thing is, is in the work of trying to understand trans people as just like, I was trying to understand you no know, trans identity as an ally but then along the way that helped me understand my gender identity a lot better and so that's also just something that is just interesting to me because also okay this this is something which actually um cat black she's a youtuber love her check out her content i'll probably i'll, I'll even link her video down below her, her youtube channel down below she has a ton of videos on this because this there's a lot of ground to cover on this and so i'm just I'm literally just, this is me just giving out just like my thoughts and opinions, just throwing them out there and hopefully to spark your thinking. But she says that, you know, it's not transphobic to not be attracted to trans people. 
Like, like if you say you wouldn't date a trans man or trans woman, that in and of itself is not a transphobic thing. Because also she asked question like, is showing support to people sleeping with them? No. I mean, I think we know where it comes to race. Like we know that just because you're dating a black person doesn't mean you you're not racist, right? I mean, we know also means that issue of fetishization right because even trans bodies can be fetishized by some because of just you know whatever's going on in their heads or their minds and all of that and so i do think also even i recognize how sometimes right the trans community the non-binary community you know the gender non-conforming community sometimes when we're advocating for respect and you know decency sometimes the messages do get mixed and I do think sometimes people are labeled as being transphobic when they're not really you know I do think also I, I do think also as a community we need to just reassess what that means for someone because I also wouldn't want I mean I wouldn't want someone to feel like they're dating me out of obligation right like you no know, you shouldn't be with someone to show that oh you're such a good person or as almost like charity like you know and that's why sort of when she like the way she puts it i do understand what she means because i think also just because of the way society still is a lot of people even if they might actually be attracted to a trans person or they might not have any issues with it some people might feel a lot of shame because of the way society is and i know some the, you know, there are people who think, that, oh, no, but now society is so progressive, everything, like, you know, you can literally be yourself, do whatever you want, but that's not really the case. If we're being honest, yes, things are definitely a lot better. They're a lot better now than they were, you know, before I was born, probably like even 10 years from what I've heard, like in the span of 10 years, things have progressed a lot quicker, a lot faster. And like, for example, I'm really grateful for all the representation that I'm seeing, like, in the, like even in the last two to three, even five years, like within my own, like, from when I was in high school compared to now, I do see that there has been improvement in like the media and stuff, but there's still a long way to go. There is still a long way to go because let's be honest, like for example, if if I were to be attacked or harassed because of my gender identity, like there have been times where I've stepped out in a very femme presenting way and I would have a real genuine fear for my safety and I always think to myself, like, if something happens to me, where would I go? Because the police station, <laughs> I'll probably, in, like, you know, they'll probably inflict even more violence, you know, assuming they don't just chase me away. And so we see how even just the system, the system is in place. Like, I, I wonder, how does the South African trans community, like, how is healthcare like for them? Because as far as I know, that a lot of public, you know, hospitals or clinics aren't very kind to them. They have to go to, you know, clinics it's almost like you have to know that okay this clinic is lgbtq friendly like even me i know that there have been times when i've had you know um issues which i won't go into detail in but you know where i didn't feel comfortable talking to my gp or i remember actually also being referred to this other public place and i was like you know what i'm not gonna go there right and i've also heard countless sorts of people where literally it's like you know you'd rather die than go to the clinic and risk harassment and health can even now I'm a I'm studying medicine for those who don't know right and I've even heard my classmates sometimes some of the things that they've said that have been transphobic queerphobic homophobic and I'll be like I pray to God that you don't get patients from the LGBTQ plus community because I fear that instead of helping them you will hurt them you know you first of all might not even treat I think also what also happens is right if you were to go to a doctor or healthcare professional and you don't feel safe, you're not going to open up. You're not going to, maybe you have a real healthcare issue. Like, or maybe, for example, you know, the, the one of the, you have a symptom, right? But then you won't feel comfortable expressing it or talking about it like an injury got or whatever the case might be because it will out you and you fear how the doctor will act. Meanwhile, that you are withholding critical information for your diagnosis and... Maybe that is just, you know, that can be its own topic for another day. But I think also just me doing all this work and all this reading being more aware is also helped give me a little bit more purpose in terms of, okay, you know what? Because there are times when I question, like, do I even want this degree still? But then I think of, 
you know, all the future, all like the future queer baby boys, girls and non-binaries and just how I'd like to find a way, like, you know, with my degree, with my medical knowledge, how can I help them? Like that's something that I've really been really thinking about and really deep diving into because that is really a, a gap, you know, I mean, I also think within the medical community, medical field, especially in South Africa, there is a lot of misunderstandings. It's kind of like, I think if you were to go to like an ordinary GP or something as a queer person with an issue, they might not even know how to help you. I think even if they wanted to, because I feel like the way it is right now, right, is that it's sort of optional whether or not a doctor learns about these things. Meanwhile, I think it should be standard across the board. Yes, we are a minority, but that doesn't mean we don't deserve decent treatment. It doesn't mean we don't deserve just basic health care. And I think this is where this is where I sort of I lose patience with people who want to argue about this. Like you, like you don't realize that this affects people, like real people. And it kind of frustrates me, right, that a lot of people don't recognize or don't see the issue until it's someone that they know, right? Until someone you know comes out to you. That's when you're like, oh my gosh, um, how can I help? That That's when people start doing the work, which you know what I think is great because I mean, statistically it has been shown that when someone knows someone who's queer, it does. And by the way, I'm using queer as an umbrella term for those who don't know, like queer is just an umbrella term. And I know that word has some controversy to it, but I've reclaimed it. But yeah, it's a thing where people need to know someone who's queer before they're able to be more accepting, accommodating. And it's kind of like, why can't we just do the work? Like this goes back to the issue of the fact that we aren't taught about these things at a young age. And some people think, oh, it's going to convert children. But it's like, newsflash, I've been raised in a cis heteronormative society all my life. And it didn't, it didn't change me because that's not who I am. And that's why I think people are missing that this is fundamentally who we are. And it deserves to be respected. It deserves to be protected. Like, be more than just a matter. I think also, and this is probably like my last point, because I feel like, I feel like now I'm really getting a little bit all over the place. But if we, as the queer community, were allowed to just thrive and exist, right? Not only would that mean our lives would be better, but I'd also believe that in our queerness, in our different perspective, right? We could bring so much good into society, and we already have. But I do think that we could do so much more, so much better. And this isn't me saying that, oh, you need to help queer people or love queer people because they can help you type of thing. Like, no, it's just, you know, fundamentally, we're all human. I feel like that is the fundamental issue. The root issue is that people don't see us as humans. We're not seen as fully competent you know humans de- deserving of love i mean if you think about it with the trans community right there's the whole issue of do you need dysphoria to be trans right like people talk i've, I've listened to people talk about how if you want to seek medical interventions to help you transition you have to go see all these counselors all these therapists all these doctors and it's kind of like why can't you just listen to me listen to me when i tell you this is who i am Listen to that and respect that. I think fundamentally that is all we're asking for. And on that note, thank you so much for listening. Hopefully you were able to follow through with my train of thought. Like I recorded this podcast a little differently. Like normally I would write down notes to have my thinking, just to try to keep my thoughts in order. But I just felt like today I just want to just sit down and just just talk freely from the, from the heart and forgive me if I didn't say the right things. Like, I did try. Like, I feel like I, I, I want to try to get to the point where I can just, like, Cat Black inspires because she speaks so honestly, so, um, she's so unafraid. And sometimes, like, sometimes, like, I'll be watching a video on my girl, what she just said, that ain't it. But I appreciate her honesty. And you can just tell just how genuine she is. And that is the point I want to try to get to because I still, I do sometimes feel like a hesitance like oh i don't want to say the wrong thing i don't want to offend anyone and also i low-key don't want to mess up my own 
<laughs> career like we're living in cancel culture like I, i'm scared that even though this podcast barely has 20 listeners but like i'm scared that somebody is gonna find a clip of something that i said and just i don't know I don't know, y'all. At this point, I'm literally rambling. So thank you so much for listening. And until I see you guys, well, or until you hear from me, I don't know, I might have a YouTube video coming out. Um, it seems like, like I said, remember I said in the last episode that I might be going to rest soon. Yeah, it looks like I really might be going to rest soon. So the content really might just stop. But you know what? Let's focus on the present. Till I hear from you guys again. Sorry for rambling this much. If you made it to this point, I love you so much. Bye, guys.